As we continue in our study of the book of Proverbs, I want to summarize today the 25 things that wise guys do that fools don't. The 25 things that wise guys do that fools don't. And when I say wise guys, I obviously mean wise girls also. Our sons and daughters are both included in the context of Proverbs. But when you're wise, there's a great distinction between that and being a fool. The Bible defines the wise person as the one who fears God and therefore receives from God common sense, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in order to live skillfully, righteously, and effectively in this present world. That's who the wise person is. They fear the Lord and God gives them wisdom, judgment, and understanding. The fool, on the other hand, is not someone who is not smart. It's not someone who has a bad report card. The fool is someone who lacks common sense and proper judgment because of his willful disobedience and irreverence towards God. So when you hear the word fool used in the Bible, or especially in the book of Proverbs, it means someone who lacks common sense and proper judgment because of his willful disobedience and irreverence towards God. So the book of Proverbs makes a distinction between the wise person and the fool, the wise and the fool. So what are the 25 things that wise people do that fools don't? What are the 25 things that those who are wise understand and practice that fools don't? Well, number one, wise people read and memorize the Proverbs of Solomon. See, by studying Proverbs, children learn how to be shrewd and disciplined, and not only children, but adults too. This book is for the Church of Jesus Christ. It is not an Old Testament book for Old Testament people. It is a book that can teach adults and children how to live righteously, skillfully, and effectively in a wicked world. And you see, it says, by studying Proverbs, wise people learn how to be shrewd and disciplined. They learn how to read between the lines and how to see through disguises. And they learn how to recognize the fool. Wise people love Proverbs because it keeps them from being simple-minded and open to those who would destroy them. Proverbs 1, verses 2 to 6 puts it this way. The purpose of these Proverbs is to teach people wisdom and discipline and to help them understand wise sayings. Through these Proverbs, people will receive instruction in discipline, good conduct, and doing what is right just and fair. These proverbs will make the simple-minded clever. They will give knowledge and purpose to young people. Let those who are wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser. And let those who understand receive guidance by exploring the depth of meaning in these proverbs, parables, wise sayings, and riddles. So number one, wise guys read and memorize the Proverbs of Solomon. Wise people read and memorize the Proverbs of Solomon. Number two, wise people fear the Lord. This doesn't mean that they're scared of God. It just means that they have a deep reverence for His awesome and holy majesty. God blesses them with knowledge and understanding because they are so humble before Him. Wise people know that the fear of the Lord is the key to everything good in life. Proverbs puts it this way. Proverbs 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction, or wisdom and discipline. Now, I want to be clear here. The fear of the Lord, once again, is not to be terrified of God. This is not what impels us to obedience. The fear of the Lord is a deep reverence for God. It is a sense of His awesomeness, His mightiness, His majesty that impels and compels us to revere Him, to obey Him. This is what the fear of the Lord is. Now, there is, in a sense, however, a fear of the Lord, which means that we don't cross certain lines. Just like we're afraid of our father's punishment or our mother's discipline, we say, I'm not crazy, I'm not doing that because I know what will happen to me. So there is, in a sense, where the Christian says, though I'm a child of God and my father loves me, I don't want to incur my father's judgment. I don't want to incur my father's chastening. 
I don't want that to happen to me. I'm going to choose to be smart and wise. So the fear of the Lord is a combination of reverence for God, awe at his majesty, and certainly that tinge of fear that says, I'm not doing that. You must be crazy. I don't ever want to incur God's hand against me. Number three, wise guys love to listen to their parents because they become even wiser by using their parents' experience common sense and wisdom in every area of life. Proverbs 1, 8 puts it this way, My son, hear the instruction of your father and forsake not the law of your mother. Wise people love to listen to their parents because they become even wiser by using their parents' experience, common sense and wisdom in every area of life. They know also that obedience makes their parents glad and rewards them for all their hard work and sacrifice. Wise people know that they gain wisdom when they listen to their parents and show reverence to God. And since wisdom can be defined as knowing how to live the best life with the highest values so that you become a blessing to yourself and to others, in the long run, wise people win and fools lose. Wise people win and fools lose. Proverbs 1.8, my son, Hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Proverbs 10.1 A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son grief to his mother. Proverbs 23.19-26 echoes the same theme. Listen, my son, and be wise, and keep your heart on the right path. Do not join those who drink too much wine. Listen to your father who gave you life. And do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Get wisdom, discipline, and understanding. The father of a righteous man has great joy. He who has a wise son delights in him. May your father and mother be glad. May she who gave you birth rejoice. My son, give me your heart. And let your eyes keep to my ways. What a wonderful, wonderful piece of scripture. Proverbs 23, 19 to 26. And you can see in these verses that God expects children to make their parents glad. You know, your parents don't ask you to work. They don't ask you to provide income for the family. They might ask you to take out the garbage. They might ask you to clean the room. But children, you have to understand, your task is not just to give them nice gifts at Christmas or, you know, Mama's Day or or, or Father's Day. It is to give them a pride of joy that the child that they are raising is lovely and loving towards God, has a beautiful spirit, a wise spirit. If you really want to make your parents glad, don't worry about the cards. Give them a life of obedience towards God and a life of love towards Him and others. A life of wisdom. Let your parents see that you are wise. Because the opposite of that is if they don't see that, it's grievous to them and it hurts them deeply. The proverb says that. There's, sort of, there's something else I want to point out in this proverb. In our culture, we are taught by television and yes, even sometimes by the church of Jesus Christ that when children reach a certain age, adolescence, they have to rebel. They have to find their way in the world. With pimples comes iniquity. With pimples comes rebellion. No, this is not true. The Bible wants children to be obedient and to honor their parents. This is true no matter how old they are, except obviously in adulthood they still keep honoring their parents. They don't have to obey them, but they have to honor them. You are to Honor your father and your mother. The book of Proverbs places the parents, mother and father, in authority over the child. Not in an authoritarian structure to destroy his or her soul, but in a place of authority that has to be respected. And while our culture teaches that children should have the right to rebel based on their hormonal issues, based on their age, and based on the fact that their peers are more popular than their parents, the Bible says no. It says, may your father and mother be glad. May she who gave you birth rejoice, my son. 
Listen to your father who gave you life. And don't despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and sell it not. And what's the proverb saying? Look, man, children, when it comes right down to it, as you grow older, you need to recognize that your parents gave life to you. You have no cause to dishonor them. You have no cause to hurt them deeply. You have no cause to be a fool. If you are a son or daughter of the covenant, you need to honor the promise that God made with your parents about you. Do not despise your mother when she's old. And there's great wisdom there. You know, as we get on in life, As we get older, there are times in our culture we think, well, you know, my parents are irrelevant now. They've done their job. I can move on. But you know, if your parents need something, you should seek to fulfill a responsibility of giving to them because of the life they gave you. Don't just put them in a corner because they're old. I know there are times we can't deal physically with our aging parents because it might be too much for us but get help don't abandon them that happens too often in our culture this is a kingdom culture we live in in the church of jesus christ it is not a a worldly culture and the principles are different we are to honor our parents till they die and even honor their memories after they die wise people learn to listen to their parents And in so doing, they become even wiser by using their parents' experience, common sense, and wisdom in every area of life. Number four, wise people don't resent the rod of God or the rod of their parents. They know that physical and verbal discipline will be good for them in the long run. They know that God has commanded their parents to discipline them for the sake of righteousness. Now, I'm not saying we should go out and beat up our kids. That's not what I'm saying. But the Bible is clear. There is a realm, there is a place where children are disciplined. The Bible speaks of the rod of correction. And it tells children don't resent that. Proverbs 15.5, only a fool despises a parent's discipline. Whoever learns from correction is wise. Only a fool despises a parent's discipline, and whoever learns from correction is wise. In Hebrews, we are told that God chastens those whom he loves. And so we need to teach our children, if I'm going to chasten you, if I'm going to discipline you, it's because I love you. I love you too much to let you have your own way. And parents, I want to warn you. If you're allowing your children to have their own way because someone has told you that that's love, you are wrong. That's not loving them. True love means I'm going to intervene. I'm going to interrupt. I'm going to stop you from becoming a fool. I'm going to stop you as you head down that pathway of temptation. I'm going to rule over your life in love. My home is a benevolent dictatorship. It is not a Republican democracy. I rule, dad rules. You have to listen because God says so, but we hope that you listen out of love, not out of force and fear. But nevertheless, listen, you must. And there are times when parents must apply discipline to their children. And if you don't do that, the Bible says, he who does not discipline his son hates him. It is your task to circumscribe, to draw boundaries around your children's lives and to say to them, this far you go and no further. No, Father, you can't do this. No, we have to tell our children sometimes that's the wrong person to be with. That is not a good friend for you to have. But you know, it's so popular on television in our culture to let kids figure things out. That is not biblical. Yes, they should grow in understanding, but as you guide them, as you lead them, and absolutely as you command them at times, you ought to be able to say to your kids, that's wrong, that person's wrong for you, we're not doing this, you're not going that way, you're not eating this, and you're not doing that. Look, if they were going to ingest something that was poisonous, hopefully you would stop them. Well, in the same way, if they're going to do something that will bring damage to their souls, damage to their spirits, if they're going to hang around with people who are fools and who are not wise, it is your task, it is your responsibility to bring that restriction and that limitation to your children. And children, the Bible says, listen to your parents. 